All right, so how many waters will we have? Five, Five waters. How many hydroxides? One. Then we got one hydroxide and a ion three. So it goes to two plus. There it is. Yes? I believe you can, it won't be a problem. Yeah, because aqua is alphabetical, right. But in terms of the formula, they often have the smallest numbers first and the largest numbers. That's why it could be like that. I believe it would be acceptable the other way. I don't remember any rules against that. All right, I'd like you to write the names for these ions here. For these ions, you'll notice aluminum does not have a uh, Roman numeral. Why not? We got one oxidation state. Oxidation state. So. How about we do just this tetra bromo nickel two? NIBR2 2 minus right there that is your answer for the tetrabromo nickel 2 Now the next class of coordination compounds is when the complex ion is a cation So when the complex ion is a cation which has a positive charge you write the complex ion name Then you write the name of the counter anion so in this case here, you've got tetra because you've got four of the what? Tetra amines, copper two, and then you include your phosphate name, which is your counter anion in this case. Uh, it's copper two. The phosphate here has a negative three charge to it. And there are two of them on the formula. And so that means that this whole thing, there are three of these. So this has to have a, neg a negative two for the entire thing. And then you go backwards. Um, if this here, I'm sorry, it has to have a positive two, pardon me. So this has no charge, that has a positive two at the copper. Wait, 
Ammonium has no charge. So phosphate's minus three. So you got negative six net charge. On this side, the whole thing has to have a positive two charge. Ammonia has no charge. Copper has to be the positive two to cause that to be neutral. Okay, what about diamine silver one sulfate? So your answer here should be AG parentheses NH32 brackets 2 SO4. So that's diamine 1 silver. Now reactions involving coordination compounds. Two compounds that both are containing ligands. The ligand in greater concentration replaces the ligand in lesser concentration. So let's look at this example. One drop of diamine silver one nitrate solution is placed in sodium cyanide solution. So you've got one drop of diamine silver one nitrate. So what is in a larger concentration? The amine or the cyanide? Okay, the cyanide, very good. So we've got our diamine silver one, we already did that nitrate, so we separate out its ions, and your sodium cyanide. The cyanide switches places with the amine, giving us our silver cyanide complex, which would be called uh, disyano silver one, and our nitrate, sodium, and our ammonia are left over. Our sodium and nitrate cancel out, giving us our new complex down here. The cyanide and the ammonia do not cancel out because they're in a complex in one and by themselves in another. So that's a reaction involving a coordination compound. So let's try to do this one on your own on your own for these two substances. All right, first thing to do is figure out which substance is going to be the complex. Okay, so which one is the, uh, is the complex to begin with? Is it sodium thiocyanate or chromium 3 hydroxide? Okay. Chromium 3 hydroxide. So you've got your chromium 3 hydroxide, formula CR parentheses OH3 because it's a suspension, and your SCN is in the ionic solution. What is suspended? Correct. Suspended means it is floating around in a solution. It is not dissolved. Then your SCN, because it's in high concentration, replaces the hydroxide. The rule of thumb says you double the charge. That's why you have six thiocyanates in the chromium complex. Sodiums cancel out, and you're left over with your final balanced chemical reaction. Now, reactions that involve coordination compounds, there's also acid-base neutralization with ligands. Ligands can act as a base, an acid or a base. Or a basid and an ace. 
Uh, ligand that accepts hydrogen ions will break away from the transition metal. So if it accepts those hydrogen ions, it'll break away. And ligands accept hydrogen ions very easily because of their extra electrons in the ligand itself. For example, a hydrogen can easily attach to this right here. If you take ammonia as an example, you attach a hydrogen right here, boom. What ion is this now? Ammonium. That's how it happens in general, but that is specifically what is happening with most ligands. Not all, but most ligands. So, if we had 100 milliliters of one molar diamine silver one nitrate solution mixed with 100 milliliters of two molar nitric acid. Okay, you've got your diamine silver nitrate, and this is your hydrogens from your nitric acid and your NO3. The ligand can accept a hydrogen to become NH4+. And then you've got silver left over, silver ions, nitrate ions, and you have the ammonia which you made from the H and the NH3 combining together. The nitrates cancel out. So your AgNH3 plus your two hydrogens makes silver metal ions plus two of the um, ammonium ions. So this would be a acid-base neutralization with this particular ligand. As you'll notice here you don't have any H's or OH's left over so it's neutralizing that acid, that hydrogen ion. If we have diamine silver nitrate again mixed with excessive bromic acid, hydrobromic, what's going to switch places? NH3 and the Br. That's going to form silver bromide because of the silver in the bromines, which is a solid, and that's how you would get a precipitate forming in this acid, I mean, in this ligand neutralization, acid base neutralization. So, again, that's the process. This is a very common amine, especially, is a common um, base. Yeah? yeah. So, acid base neutralization can only make a salt in water, but in this case, if you have a complex agent, mm -hmm. it makes a salt and ammonia? A ligand, yep. So whatever that ligand might be. In this case, it's ammonia, which is a very common. Um, we know um, ammonia acts as a base. The salt may or may not be soluble, yes. Uh, yeah, if we look at this here, previous example. In this case here, we have the nitrate. So the nitrate didn't matter, the silver did. So it'll have a metal. This is, uh, well, yeah, when you have silver nitrate, it will be soluble. The NH3, the NH3 combined with the H2 to make the NH4. The AG was left alone. So the nitrate was present, but it canceled out because it was present in uh, reacting to end products. So it's a little different than a double replacement, yes. In the next one, it stayed around because bromine forms a precipitate with silver. Because silver and bromine form a precipitate, that's why it's written in the product. And the reactant, of course. Now, when the uh, complex ion is an anion, Okay, for nomenclature, you first you write the cation name and then write the complex ion name. Use the classical name for the cation in the complex. This is for your information on coordination compounds. Change the ending to eight. So if we had a metal here, the aluminum, okay, this becomes aluminate. 
if it's the metal in an anionic complex. So this is one thing that's just for your information about uh, coordination compounds where the complex ion is an anion. It's when the complex is ion is an anion. The whole entire complex is an anion. And then the and then the metal with the Roman numeral. This one uses the classical name. This is for your information only, not something we will be uh, tested on. This is for your information for this nomenclature here. Yeah. Uh, this nomenclature we will not be tested on. It's for your information only, FYI. Okay. So this is where if you saw something with a different name here, uh, you can see here the complex is a is a anion here. Here it is a cation. So here it's ammonium tetrachloro with the four chlorines and then it's cup cuprate because of the Cu here. Here you've got tetra tetraqua and dichloro chromium three chloride. So this nomenclature here is what we are familiar with and that is for if you had it in the other on the other side. If you had potassium hexacyanoferrate, you've got the K, you've got the six cyanides, and you've got the iron with a plus two. So you put all those together, you get K4FeCN6 for it to be balanced, and that would be a uh, a ligand, I'm sorry, a complex with uh, the ligand of the um, iron, uh, iron cyanide. This is another awesome colored solution, uh, substance here that contains iron in the middle. Iron is pretty cool, it's found in the middle of all sorts of things including hemoglobin. Here it has carbons around it and nitrogens around the outside and it has a very rich blue color. This particular complex has a negative, uh, free negative charge. So things we have, again, our balanced redox quiz, ion quiz number five is on Monday. And our reactions, PS7. So at this time, if you'd like to work on any reaction predictions you need to do, we'll be spending some time working together, answering questions. Limestone. That's a good question. I can't remember it offhand. Calcium carbonate's chalk. Limestone is a good question. Can't remember it offhand. Probably calcium hydroxide would be lime. That? Yes. Uh, reactions we could have. The first thing we could list. 